Hello, and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we have another StarCraft themed Sudoku for you. So we've done one of these before, which was created by Alice, and it was a wonderful puzzle. And Matt Iverson has created this one, which is very beautiful looking, and is themed on the matchup Terran vs Zerg, for those of you who know your StarCraft. It doesn't matter if you don't, the, the Sudoku should still be very enjoyable, I would imagine. So let me explain how this puzzle works. Um, the idea is that the Zerg represents the odd digits in the grid, and they must be uh, shaded in purple. Uh, so you can see there's a number of purple cells in the grid already. And the rule regarding Zerg is that these purple cells have to be regarded a bit like creep in the game, which means a creep must be connected to each other. Now, that means it must be orthogonally connected as well. So if we look actually at this box in the bottom right-hand corner, Imagine these two squares were even digits, so this one was an odd digit. This would not be a valid arrangement of the grid because this odd square here is not connected orthogonally with its friends. So we need to somehow ensure that all of the purple squares are connected into a single region um, in the finished solution. Now the other condition relates to the Terran condition, as Matt, Matt calls it, which is relating to this 8 here. The idea is that the Terran has to advance its army from this square, the 8, to this bottom square on the left-hand side, the 9. And the Terran can only move in a particular way. It can only go vertically or horizontally, and it can only go the number of squares in its existing box. So if it goes eight one two three four five six it would have to come to this six square and then wherever it lands it must turn 90 degrees and carry on that pattern so it would then have to go one two three four five six to this square and then it's going to have to come rightwards some number of cells depending on whatever we put in the yellow square there now obviously the eight could come that way presumably and make its way around the grid a different way so um, that's what has to happen in the finished solution. There has to be a way to get the 8 to the 9 using those rules and the whole of the rest of the grid, all of the odd squares have to be orthogonally connected and that's, that's all we know. Um, so do have a go. Click on the link under the video to play along. Um, uh, our tester said this is a brilliant puzzle. Um, Mark tried it as well and said it was rather more difficult than he was expecting it to be. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that but let's get cracking and see. Um, and I can put an 8 in the grid there. I can see. Let's do that. 8. That means there's an 8 there. 9 there. I guess I should shade these in actually. 9's a purple. Orange is an even digit. Uh, ah, 7. That must be a 7. That's an odd digit last time I looked. fives into one of those two squares, sixes into one of those two squares, ah, sevens, these sevens interact, give me a seven there, box a seven into those two, that must be odd, nines into one of those two positions, um, ah, sixes. That gives us this square as a 6. That figures that that 6 is not right, so this one must be right. Those two are both even, obviously. So we're already creating a bit of a cul-de-sac for this 5 and 9 look. It's this 5 and this 9 are completely surrounded by even digits, so let's try and keep an eye on that. Uh, this square's got to be a 1 or a 3 because it's odd and it's not 5, 7 or 9. Same thing is true of that one, look. Let's check these others. Yeah, the same thing is true of that one. That one could still be 5. Uh, so we've got no 1s, 2s and 3s in the grid at all. Four's locked into the top there. Oh, and four's locked into the top on the other side as well. Nines. 
Oh, eights. Look at these eights. So we know this purple digit can't can't be an eight because that that's not allowed. So that's going to have to be the eight. Means there's an eight over there. Look. Uh, okay. Sixes must be in one of those two squares. And one, ah, so sixes are locked down there where the fours are locked. So this is a four six pair at the bottom. And four and six are both even, so we can label those now. Ah, now here's a trick we can do because we've got three even digits in this box. So if we put a fourth even digit into this square, what's that going to mean? Well, that will mean that this square must be an odd digit, and it can't be because now this purple square is isolated. It cannot share a whole edge with any other purple square. So we would have two regions at least of purple, and that is not allowed. So this square must be purple. Ah, now we can do the same thing in the central box look. If I try and make this square even, because I've already got three even digits in there, that one would have to be purple. Let me show you. We can't have that arrangement. That's not going to work. That isolates this purple square. So this square must also be purple. Not actually sure how useful that is. But you can... One thing that I can see is that I've sort of got a wall of even digits going up this diagonal. Um, now that wall must never complete itself because that will create two regions in the grid. Um, so... Ah, yes. Okay, so we can do something with that. In fact, you, I think I can conclude that neither of these squares is even. Because to do so, if I create an even cell in either of those two positions, let me show you, I've got to now connect this 7 to this 9 somehow. How can I do that? Answer, it's very difficult. <laughs> um because that's going to mean I've got to come down this side of the grid. These two are going to have to be purple. This, this is all hemmed in. So I've got to come all the way down there with purple digits. Now I've got now, if we look at column six of the grid, I've got five purple digits in column six. So that square would have to be even. But we started this off by putting the fourth even digit in box two. So I've now got five even digits in box two, which means one of them will definitely be a repeat. So that does not work. Neither of these squares can create the wall here. So they're both purple. Now there must be a two in one of those two squares. Oh, and that's nice because if I have a two in one of these two squares, look at this square. This square can't be a six or an eight. It can't be a four and it can't be a two. So we don't know what it is, but we know it's odd. Same thing there. That's the same logic. Look, the four's locked up there. Sevens must be in one of those two squares.
Um, sorry about this. This is not spotting much at all here. This is definitely tricky. Oh, hang on, look, that square. There's a seven. So this square has got to connect. It's got to get out. And this, these two squares form a sort of gateway. So this square must be purple. Wow, okay. Um, sorry about this, this is proving rather tricky. I feel like I've got to use this wall somehow. Oh, now that's interesting. This square. Now if this square is even If this square is even, so no, well, actually no. If this square is a four, let's try and see what happens if this square is a four, because that's made this seven very problematical, because this seven's got to come out now, and it can only come out that way. But I'd have a four here, and now where do I put a two in this box? A two could only go into that square. Now, why does that? matter is that a problem it, I can't tell whether it's a problem for the bottom of the grid although it might be oh yes it is a problem for the bottom of the grid because how does yeah how, how does this get out it has to take this square and now it has to take this square it has to take this square and it has to take this square. So now I've got six. I've got loads of. Um, well, I've got far too many odd digits in this box. I've got six already and I haven't identified what that one is. So that is just nonsense. This square here cannot be a four. Now, if that can't be a four. This must be a 4. Let's colour that in. That means this is a 4. That means that's a 4 up there. This is a 9 because we, we know that because we, um, we took a pencil mark 9 in placing this 4. So this is a 9. Oh, now that gives us, look, over here on this side, these two squares now are a 9-7 pair. So that's rather good. This square, therefore, is odd. Nine seven pair. So now the 2 in this box is in one of those two squares. The 2 in this box is in one of those two squares. What a fascinating puzzle this is. This is absolutely fascinating. I mean, it feels to me like the grid is very clustered at the moment and cluttered, like there's a lot of givens, but I still am finding it very hard to make any sort of efficient process or progress. Um, so, Ah, now, now we can do the same trick again, can't I, with this square? If this square is a 2, what happens? Because that's going to... F yeah, that gives us a problem. That gives us a problem because now this square has to be a 2. So that would be a 2 up there. And now how do I connect this cell to this cell? 
how do I get these to breach this e enormous wall that's sort of come across the grid? And you can see again, the only way is going to be to come down this side, come down those squares, make all those purple. And why does that matter? That gives me five purple squares in column six. That square has to be a two. And now I've actually walled off. Let me show you with the colors. This is now absolutely broken. This, these purple squares are in their own region. We must avoid that. So this square is not a two. This square is purple, therefore. That locks a two into one of those two squares. And Bother. So I'm now wondering if we can do, I can see that if I make this a two, I'm causing a big problem for this seven. So let's look at that. If that's a two, this seven now has to somehow get out. So both of those squares would have to be purple. That gives me five purple digits here. And these two have to be even. These two have to be even. Now, is that a problem? It, it is, it's the same problem again. It's the same problem again, it's just harder to see. Because now, again, I've got this, I've got a bigger wall. <laughs> I've got a wall that comes all the way around there. And therefore, I've got to get this purple square to connect to this square. How do I do it? Well, the only way is going to be to come down this treacherous path down the right hand side, fill those two squares in purple again, have to fill this one in with that square, but this two means that square up there is a two. And I get a wall again. The great wall of Terran cuts off the Zerg creep, as it should do, and that is not allowed. So, actually, this square is not a two either. This square must be, well, this must be the two at the top, therefore. And as a result of that, this square, oh, no, 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 that square must be a purple square. So now I've got five, five uh, odd squares in row three. So this square must be even and must be a two. That means that square is a two look by just normal Sudoku rules. That means this square is a two because the square above it is odd. Ah, now that means I haven't looked at the twos over here, but it certainly means this square must be a purple, otherwise the seven can't get out. And in fact, that square's purple as well, because we've basically finished off column eight. Good grief. I mean, it's still, this square must be a one or a three and could be purple. One of, one of these two squares must be a nine. From I think I could have got that before. These squares here, ah, the five, that's useful. That means these two squares are one, three. This is a five. That means this is a five. That means there's a five in one of those two squares. Ah, and we can fill in the rest of that. Oh no, we can't. Somehow I nearly, I counted that wrong. I think it's because I saw an I don't know what I did, but I, anyway, I can't complete column six yet. This is not a two. These two squares are purple. So one of these is purple, one of these is orange. We've got four, look at that, we've got four even digits in column two, so that one is purple. These two are both purple in row four.
What a puzzle. My goodness me. Oh, now look. We've got a purple region here that's about to get cut off. This square has got to be purple or it will be cut off. And, and it's got to continue. That square also must be purple, which means this square is a 2. Which means this square is a 2. And that's good. That gets us our last even digit in box 2 now. So we can fill those two in. Where does the 2 go in this box? Well, it can only go here. This must be a 2 now as well. Ah, and if we look at long uh, row 7, we need, an, we need an 8. It can only go here. We can fill that in as well. That square's purple. This square is purple. <laughs> this square is a 2. And that's even. Um, so now we've got we've got a massive wall that's coming almost cutting the grid off. In fact, it is almost cutting the grid off. This square here, I think, has got to be purple, otherwise it is cut off. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that square's got to be purple, so that cannot be an eight. This is the eight. That one there. So now I think, at this stage anyway, all of the Zerg creep is connected. Yes, I was about to get worried about this square because of the way the highlighting works, but this is all connected. This is not cut off here. This comes round in there, goes over the top of the grid. Yes, okay, this is good. So ah, now this square must be an eight, therefore. Um, now this is one of these squares is a six and one of them uh, so this is a one three six option here we don't yet know how that unwinds itself down here we've got one of these squares must be a four and the other square we haven't got a scooby-doo about ah but the five here that must be a five so this must be a five that's useful So I think we're almost at the point where I'm going to need to think about the Terran constraints. Let me just have a stare at this for a little while longer just to check that I'm not missing anything basic. These squares are 1, 3 and 5. So 1, 3, 4, 7, 9. So this square can be one, three or four, I think. I can't see anything better than that. The reason I'm interested in this square is this obviously could be hit by the eight. One, three, four, six, nine. Wow, wow, this is not easy. Um, okay, so let's see how we would try and finish it off. So one thing we could do is we could think about how if we're going to try and hit this square in the bottom left hand corner we know that something must point exactly to this square so this you know five for example can never hit this square because it, it would overshoot one three six can't hit the square seven would overshoot two would overshoot four one two three no a no this, ah, this would need to be a 7, and this can't be an 8. Ah, right, so none of the bottom row can ever hit this 9. So I think we have to come from the top to hit the 9. So the 8 can't, the 2 could. So the 2 is a good place to start. The 3 could. If there was a 3 here, 1, 2, 3, that would hit it. 5, ah, this can't be a 5 because of the five there otherwise it could have hit one two three four five seven won't hit four won't hit six won't hit right so either this two or this three hit the nine so what hits the two 
uh, this square, one, two, three, this square would have to be, a, this square can't be a four. Three is not big enough. Two, three, four, five, six is impossible. Five and six are impossible. This two is not how the Terran advances. This square, this square is a three in order to get the puzzle to work. That gives us a one and a five. That is magnificent. If that's the intended way to solve this puzzle, to sort of work backwards from the nine to get this digit, that is lovely. Now, this square must be a one now. This is a three. This is a one. There's a one up there. Five must be here. This must be a one. This is a three. So these two squares are 1 and 9. That might be resolvable. I can't quite see. These two squares have got to be 3 and 1. Th uh, no, 3 and 9. Can't see how to resolve that either. These two squares are 1 and 3. Five, one, one, one's up here. Ah, how do I? This one here means that's a nine. Which means that's a nine and that's a seven. That means that's a seven. These two squares are one and three. Don't know the order yet. Nine here means this is a one though. That resolves the one and the three at the top. That gives us a three and the nine. That gives us a nine here. And what's going on at the bottom then? This can't be a one. This square has to be a three or a four. Uh, got a bad feeling about this. Have I messed this up? Not sure. Six. So what am I meant to do now then? So which we worked out this was the three, didn't we? So it went nine, three. Uh, it could be five or two from there. So I'm, maybe I'm meant to go forwards now. Five, three, four. Let's go forwards. Eight to six. That would mean we have to come down and we're going to one, two, three, four, five, six. We'd hit the two here. Then we'd hit the four. Then we'd have to go up. One, two, three, four. We'd hit the three or the one. Now it can't be three because if it's three it goes that way off the grid or hits the nine which takes us off the grid. So this would be a one that would come here. Oh now that's brilliant that doesn't work. So one here would take us to a three here which goes off the grid up that way or hits a nine that way which goes off the grid. So the Terran does not ever come to this square. The Terran goes downwards to this square which could be a three or a four. One, two, three, four. So that would go one, two, two to one. Couldn't go to the eight, would have to come to the three. Ah, that doesn't work. Hang on, I want to check this. I'm going to actually put this in. If this is a four, we hit the two. One, two, three, four. That hits the one, which can't hit the eight because that will go off the grid. So it must hit the three. Now the 3 can't go down or it goes off the grid and it can't go to the 8 or it goes off the grid. This square is not a 4. That is unbelievable. 3, 4, 4, 6, 6, oh. <laughs> and now we get, oh my goodness, this is staggering. How did you set this up, Matt? This is bizarre. So now this square must be odd. This is even. And we've got a deadly pattern that presumably is going to be resolved by the path the Terran takes. 
Oh, please, let that be the case. So we've got eight coming to the three. I'm going to highlight the cells that are used. So three. Then it goes to the four now. One, two, three. Then it goes to the one. Ah, now it can't turn right because that seven would take us off the grid. So it must turn to the four. Then it could come down to the two or up to the three. One, two, three, four. Two. Oh, loads of things are possible here. Uh, so if it comes two here, eight here, one here. Ah! In fact, there might even be a loop in there. Can I rule out anything here? Four, two, six, one, two, three, four, five, to the one. Because we worked out that couldn't be a three. To the one, so that become a three. Two. Oh, uh, that hits the nine. So that didn't work. So four, two. Sorry about this. This is. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't miss a trick here. So that would hit the one. Oh, but the one could turn right. Oh no, it can't turn right because the four would go off the grid, and the eight down here would go off the grid. So it would have to come this way which hits a three, which goes off the grid, or hits a nine, which goes off the grid. So if the four turns downwards and hits the two, it must turn right and hit the eight and go up to the one. Now, unfortunately, this looks like it's got loads of options as well. So if we go, if we go right from the one, we hit the four, which takes us to the three, which actually takes us off the grid or back to the four from the same direction that the one was going. So that's a loop. Or it goes one to the seven, two, three, four, five, six, to the six, which has to come one, two. No, that's off the grid. So that does not work. This four does not go downwards, or it could go downwards and do a little sort of a dance, but it gets back to the four again. <laughs> so that I think the four goes upwards to there. Okay, so now it could go left or right. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah, and that just takes us on a loop. So now it must turn this way. So I think it goes to the two, which goes to that square, which could be a one or a three. Well, if this is a three, it breaks because it goes, it hits the eight and that takes it off the grid or that way goes off the grid. So that resolves that this square is a one. Oh my goodness. So this is a one. Seven is too big, so it must come to the three, which must go down to the two. So those two are in. Now the ah oh, the two to the three is going to get us to the nine because we looked at that earlier. So presumably this goes off the grid, and it does. So that is the solution. That gets us around the grid. Those those blue squares are how we advance around the grid to get the Terran to the to where it needs to be. Good grief, that is complicated. Um, yeah, I loved that. That was beautiful. Amazing setting map. Absolutely amazing. Um, let me know how you got on with that. Maybe I think I was a bit slow towards the end, but um, I found a way through it and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So come back later for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I think later on Mark's going to be looking at a new puzzle from Nicolae.